Thank you. That was uh, that was probably my uh, most fun introduction. So that was that was great. I liked that one a lot. So I'm uh, so happy to be here with you today and uh, uh, and look forward to uh, your questions. So feel free to send questions my way because I'll be honest, uh, giving presentations may not be my strong suit, but we're going to give it a whirl here. So we'll see right now whether I get it right. Okay. <laughs> So I think one of the things, you know, I've, Angie's List has been around for 20 years, and, you know, I have to, like, sometimes I'm like, 20 years, that's so long. Uh, but I think it's been a great learning experience, and I think, you know, for all of us, you know, our careers are more of a journey of learning uh, than they are an end point or an end accomplishment. So, uh, you know, one of the things I've learned through this process is, you know, you really need to know what you bring to the team, and I think even more important, you need to know what you don't bring to the team. Uh, and I think sometimes we forget to, to be honest with ourselves about what we don't bring to the team. So, you know, for me, I was one of those that uh, there, there were things I brought, but I, there were also a lot of things I didn't bring. So, uh, you know, I started Angie's List when I was 22 years old. So as you can imagine, there were probably a lot of things I didn't bring to the team. So, uh, or th there was no team, actually. <laughs> There was just, uh, there was just me. So, you know, I was a, a fresh college graduate from DePauw. Um, I, uh, I had done an internship while I was in college with Bill Osterley, our CEO at Angie's List. And, uh, and uh, when I met Bill, I was, uh, I was a pretty geeky 21-year-old, uh, I think, at the time. And I remember walking into the interview, uh, very ill-prepared for the interview for this internship. Uh, but was encouraged by a, an advisor at DePauw to try it. Uh, Bill was a venture capitalist at the time. I forgot to really research what that meant. <laughs> maybe a fault of mine. So maybe a lesson number one is actually prepare for your interviews. You know, uh, I walk into the interview and the first question I get was whether I was as smart in math as the guy he had just interviewed. And it's like, how do you answer that question? I mean, I knew the guy he had just interviewed because you know, it was a small campus, and I was like, and I knew I wasn't as good at math as he was. So uh, I decided honesty was the best policy and opted to say uh, no, I was not. So if that was what they were, he was looking for, Murray was his guy. Uh, Murray was the one he needed. Uh, but uh, you know, it turned out we had a very good conversation. He did ask me the dreaded question of what venture capital was. I fumbled through it and said it was, you know, making an investment in small companies. Uh, and you know, years later, he admitted to me that the reason he gave me the job is because he thought I deserved a break, because the highlight on my resume at that time was Employee of the Month at Ryan Steakhouse. So, <laughs> which is still often put in presentations around Angie's list. So, uh, you know, so I think you know, understanding kind of what your talent was. You know, when I started Angie's list, it was. Uh, you know, we, we had an idea for the business, but we didn't really have a marketing plan. Um, I was terribly shy and introverted and still am today. Uh, and so the only solution we had, because we didn't raise much money to start the business, was for Angie to go door to door selling memberships. So that didn't really work out so well for me, as you might imagine. I was terrified. Uh, so I would work in the office during the day, and then in the evening, I would go out and sell Angie's List memberships to people who didn't want to answer their door. Uh, and uh, and, and, and I, would, I would measure my sales in ones and twos. Like, I was like, if I sold one membership a day, it was a great day. Uh, and, uh, and I found that door-to-door uh, -door sales was probably more of a character building exercise for me than, than anything else. And uh, luckily for me, we discovered uh, through that process that that might not be the way we wanted to grow the business uh, and decided that we needed to actually do some advertising. Which, which we did. Um, so luckily I could go back to, you know, sitting at my computer back then. But, uh, but I think it's important to understand, you know, kind of understand your weaknesses. And I think that's one thing that sometimes folks are, are vulnerable and don't want to admit. And, and I think it's really important because your organization will grow successfully when you're willing to, to realize that, I think. Uh, because, you know, like, you know, you know, I look at the business today, there are lots of people much more talented in areas that I have no skill in at Angie's List, but it's, it's really about bringing that team together that makes the difference. I think, you know, one of the other key points is, 
you know, being focused and being persistent um, and being committed uh, to our key to making anything happen. Um, a lot of times people will ask me, Angie, are you an entrepreneur? And I will say, absolutely not. I am not an entrepreneur. I do not define what an entrepreneur is. I am not necessarily a risk taker. Uh, I like a, a, a well-laid plan. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I am probably kind of the complete opposite of an entrepreneur, and, and that has always been my answer. Uh, but, you know, I think when you think about the characteristics of being an entrepreneur, um, you know, a lot of times it comes down to perseverance. Uh, and that is one thing that, uh, you know, I think a lot of times businesses don't get off the ground and, and don't get kind of past their early stumbling blocks. Because let me tell you, in the early days, there are lots of stumbling blocks. There are lots of people that tell you no. There are lots of people that tell you you can't do it. There are lots of, lots of reasons for it not to go. Uh, to go well, and I think perseverance is probably one of the things that are the key drivers of making a successful enterprise. Um, and you know, and I think that was probably, and I think back on it, probably the one trait that I did have. Uh, and you know, it was like it was an, it was almost a relentless, undying, you know, kind of you know desire to be successful. Uh, and I think that's, and so when I think back on kind of defining entrepreneurship, I think that kind of comes back to it. I think one of my favorite stories in that regard was uh, I was probably, I don't know, maybe five months into the business and was having, you know, a, a, a kind of one of those miserable days probably. You know, maybe I'm the only one that likes to cry at work, but I like to cry at work. I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I was like sitting in my little 10 by 10 office with my card table and, you know, miserable, kind of realizing, why did I go to college to go door to door? I'm certainly not getting a good return on my college investment at this point. And I have no friends because I moved to Columbus, Ohio, where I know absolutely no one. Uh, and so I call up Bill and, uh, and he and I meet for uh, coffee because I wanted to talk. And, you know, I, I, to this day, I'm like, he was very smart that day because he knew he did not want to come to that office to have that conversation with me. He's like, we're going to meet at the coffee shop down the street, Angie. I think that's a better solution. Uh, and, uh, and he was right. Like, I get to the coffee shop, and I literally, from the moment I sit down, I'm crying. I am just like, I am miserable. I am just like, and Bill just like keeps talking. He keeps talking. He's like pep talk from like the second he sits down, he was geared and ready to go. And, uh, and at the end of it, all I could muster was, I'm not gonna quit. And then, you know, and if any of you know Bill, you know that his, his response was, well, great, well, let's get back to work. <laughs> He's like, got through that one. <laughs> But, uh, but I think that is one of the things that are, that are important for, you know, kind of getting a business. It can be very lonely starting a business, and I think that's one of the things that we sometimes forget. Um, but having a good support system and having, and having, you know, a group of people that are cheering you on is, is important because that's what's going to make um, those kind of not-so-great days better. Um, you know, I, I think I had the, not, the luxury of starting a business when I was 22 years old. A lot of times people will ask me, like, should you start a business now? When's the perfect time? You know, starting a business is like having a child. There is no perfect time. You're never going to have enough experience. You're never going to have enough money. You're never going to have enough everything. You're never going to have enough time. Uh, you know, but if you just don't take that leap, you'll never have children. You may never start a business, and you never, you might always wonder what could have been. So, um, so you know, kind of being 22, one of the great things you get to do is you get to be kind of ignorant. Like I was, uh, you know, I didn't come from a business background. My my dad's a UPS driver. My mom was a bank teller. You know, I'm like I didn't know anything about starting a business when I started the business, and and I think uh, that's what can be wonderful that way, kind of, because ignorance is bliss. It's kind of almost like a child, you know, when they don't know that they shouldn't have asked that question, and. And I think that's, uh, and, and when you forget about kind of how things are supposed to be done, you might just be surprised at the response. So, uh, you know, early on we realized that, you know, getting some publicity around the business was probably a good idea. Like, hey, if we could get people to tell our story for us, that might actually help us spread the brand and get people to know us. So, you know, I didn't know how to do PR and nor did I know any of the rules and nor did I have a PR agency or anything like that. So, uh, so one day I was like reading the daily newspaper and I saw an article that a reporter had written 
uh, about a woman who had started a business. And I was like, well, that's an interesting article. Maybe I should call that reporter up and see if she wants to write a story about me. So I called her. I mean, what, I was knocking on doors. I mean, what's one more person to tell me no? I mean, <laughs> so I called the reporter up and I'm like, hey, I saw your article the other day about, I don't even remember the business she wrote about. And, you know, and I was, I've started a business and I'm a, I'm a young woman. Would you like to write a story about my business? And she was like, sure. I was like, well, great, let's do that. And, you know, and lo and behold, we get a, you know, an article in the daily newspaper and, you know, life, get, you know, and I start selling more than one membership a day and life gets a little better. But I think it's one of those situations where if you're not afraid of the word no, you never know my, what might happen. And, you know, it's like, I don't think there's a special way in which you have to, you know, interact with the press. You can just call them up. It's okay. It's okay. You know, because, you know, what are they going to say, you know? And, it, and in many ways, you might catch them off guard a little bit that they might just say yes. So, uh, you know, I think one of the things about me is while I'm not as smart as Murray at math, I do love math. Uh, <laughs> and so I think, you know, when you kind of know your strengths, I, I love to analyze absolutely everything. In fact, you know, the team probably at times are like, Angie, you are like, you know, you are so far in the weeds chasing some rat hole, I don't even know what you're doing. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, I used to, you know, with our, with our former CEO, we used to actually have Excel spreadsheet races to see who could kind of build a spreadsheet fastest. So we're like, I'm like a serious, like, math geek. I don't know. Um, you know, so if I had my way, I would sit in my office and I would, you know, do math spreadsheets all day long. Um, you know, unfortunately, I don't get to do that every day, except for those are the days I do like the most. <laughs> you know, I like, I, I, uh, I kind of, I, I chuck this up kind of like, you know, sometimes you have to eat your peas. You know, sometimes you have to do things that you don't necessarily want to do, whether it's going door to door. You know, for me, you know, it's like coming, you know, I, I applaud all of you for coming to events like this. These are the kind of things, like, I usually, like, beg my husband to come along because, like, he's the social one. He's the one that can like, you know, make small talk and I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, don't really talk that much. Uh, and, you know, so, so those are things that I have to, I've had to teach myself and I had to uh, force myself to, to do along the way. Uh, you know, all the way up to, you know, when, uh, you know, when our marketing department suggested that I be in our TV commercials and I was like, oh, okay, well, that'll, that'll be, that, okay, well, we can try that. And, you know, now, you know, now I, I can't go anywhere without being recognized and there are days when, when I'm at the grocery store and haven't showered and my kids are acting up that I kind of wish I, uh, I wasn't recognized, but <laughs> that too kind of goes along with it. I try to remind myself that, you know, every, every mom has those days, but <laughs> uh, so you gotta, you know, you gotta push yourself outside of your comfort zone, which I think is, which I think is important. I think, uh, I think one of the things, um, that I've been asked about along the way when it comes to kind of starting a business is, you know, do you have to be that person that comes up with a fantastic idea? You know, I got, you know, no, you don't. I mean, Angie's List was a copy of a business that was here in Indianapolis that started in 1974. Anybody heard of Unified Neighbors? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we literally took that idea to Ohio and started our own version of Unified Neighbors. We even kind of knocked off the name. It was called Columbus Neighbors when we first started. It wasn't called Angie's List. So there's a little trivia. And, uh, and you don't. You just have to be able to, can you execute on the idea? So, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that, you know, when, when, when you are kind of getting your team together, it's actually the team that matters. It's not the idea. So, you know, a great team with a mediocre idea is probably going to do better than a mediocre team with a great idea. Because inevitably what happens is that idea needs tweaking, it needs altering along the way, and it comes down to those people that you surround yourself with, because each one of them brings something to that idea that can make it fantastic. So, uh, so remember that when you're thinking, you know, kind of like, hey, what does it take to build it? Is it the great business plan or is it the great team? It's the great team. So be really picky. Be really picky about who you're picking to kind of join you and surround yourself with. And I, you know, and I think, uh, I actually, I have a story in here about someone in the audience, so I didn't know if I should share it, but I, I think I will. <laughs> so, uh, 
you know, and I, and I think, you know, that's a continual evolution of kind of finding the right team uh, and being willing. And I think when you're in the right team, you're willing to take chances as well. And, uh, you know, one of our folks is here in the audience today. And she, uh, years ago, there was an opportunity in our marketing department to run our SEO program. We didn't have a program. We were behind. Like, nothing was terribly going well with it. You know, our venture capitalist was like, you really need to get this figured out. And, uh, and Shelly was, was in the marketing department. She was running copywriting for us at the time. And, uh, and it was one of those where, like, we, Bill and I are like, we've got to get this figured out. And, you know, Shelly overhears us tell this, you know, talking about this. And she comes up to me afterward. And she's like, I want to do it. And I was like, oh, Shelly, no, you don't, <laughs> you don't really want to do this because, you know, this is one of those situations where uh, you're either going to do this well or you're not going to be here. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's those opportunities. And I was like, I, I really like you, so I don't, I, I don't know, maybe just let's go over here and do this. And she's like, no, I want to do it. And I was like, all right, all right. And, you know, and Shelly knew absolutely nothing about SEO. And, you know, and, and, but, you know, I am, it's, I was always so impressed. She ran out, she learned more about SEO than, than, uh, than most people do in their entire career. And she built a fantastic SEO program for us to the point that uh, the venture capitalist later came back and, you know, he was kind of like, when we first said, hey, we've got someone internal, we're going to put her in charge of SEO. And he was like, Ugh, you guys, what are you doing? And he came back later and he was like, Shelly, is good enough at SEO that she could run SEO for any Silicon Valley company. You know, and it was one of those things that's like, it just makes you proud to see, see things like that happen. And I think having a team that, uh, that you trust and are comfortable with and are willing to take those risks inside of that team, uh, you know, produces those kind of results. And now she's our VP of product. So, um, I thought this picture was kind of funny, so. <laughs> See, this isn't me. Obviously, you know, my, my friend Ellen over here actually put this presentation together for me. She's trying to make me more funny. Um, <laughs> I give her the words and she puts it together in a fun way. Uh, you know, you need to balance your weaknesses, uh, you know, because we can't do anything by ourselves. So this, I think this picture is a perfect example of how you do that. Uh, you know, so, you know, while I might be the quiet one, you've got to have someone that's confident. My husband is a great foil to that. You know, I mean, you just always have to think about what you need on your team to balance yourself out. Uh, and that is a continual process because there's always going to be things in your group that you're maybe not, maybe not comfortable with. Don't rest on your laurels. <laughs> So, you know, this is the uh, 22 or, I don't know, maybe 25-year-old Angie back in the day. Uh, and, uh, and, and we used to joke around that, uh, that we had, I had to go through a bit of a transformation to kind of get comfortable being in front of people, in front of a camera, and, and not in front of my computer. So, uh, you know, and, and so here we are, you know, kind of starring in the TV commercials, which, um, which is never, I oftentimes get the question of, you know, did you ever think you'd be, you know, the the namesake of a company and, and be in a national TV campaign. I'm like, no, I never thought that. You know, it's, it's, it's about kind of being open to kind of opportunities along the way and kind of thinking about how you might evolve yourself and making sure that you're having fun um, every day while you're doing it because I think that's what's, that's what's important. When you're thinking about, uh, you know, building your team, I think it's really important that you're uh, a macro leader and not a micromanager. Uh, I got quoted, I think it was in the New York Times, I think I came up with this one, I was like, let your people swim, but don't leave the pool. Um, you know, like my number one cardinal rule when it comes to, f to folks on the team is like, hey, I want you to go and figure things out on your own. Like, I, I go, go do it, because you're gonna, you guys are gonna move faster than if we all sit here and kind of think about it as a group. My only rule is, when it doesn't go right, just come tell me. Just make sure I'm the first to know, you know, and like, you know, that's just our rule because then I can help you fix it. Then we can work together to fix the problem. But the longer you, the longer you let it go, the harder it is for us to fix it. And then, and then I get annoyed, uh, you know, so I've, I've coupled this with, you know, I wouldn't let my kids go swimming by themselves. 
I'd stand by, <laughs> I would sit by the pool, you know, it's like, yeah, they need to go swim and have fun, but, you know, if they get in trouble, I want to be there to grab them out. I mean, it's that same kind of philosophy. Uh, and, and, and I think that's, that's important. And I think it's, it's one of those traits that I had a very hard time actually learning. I think actually becoming a mother was probably one of the things that helped me kind of be a better manager. In fact, one of our employees told me that one day. I was like, you got better when you became a mom. And I was like, okay, I think, I think you might be right. I think, you know, I, I still to this day always uh, celebrate maternity leaves because it forced me to let go of things. You know, like my first maternity leave, I was buying all of our TV, or not all our TV, all of our advertising across the country. So 20 markets, I was, I was negotiating every contract for places we advertise. Well, that baby was born during contract negotiation time. It was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to give this up. So I had, uh, I had a young woman on the team and uh, she was fresh out of Notre Dame and I was like, okay, Trisha, you're gonna, you're gonna buy the TV advertising. And Trisha and I had a really good rapport and she was incredibly cheap, which I really liked because I'm kind of incredibly cheap too. So we had this little game. I would tell her how much I wanted the contract for and it was usually for less than what I was currently paying the contract for. And she would then say, okay, I don't want to disappoint Angie, so I am going to make sure that I ask for some number lower than it. We got great ad deals that year <laughs> because Trisha was just dogged. She was just like, no, no, I, I won't take that. And, you know, and, and what happened was the best thing that ever happened. Trisha got a lot more responsibility over that maternity leave and learned a bunch of stuff. And uh, I never bought another ad contract again, which uh, which is a fantastic uh, which is a fantastic uh, thing. Um, but you know, kind of learning to be you know kind of high high um, high individual performers often have a hard time becoming um, leaders because they tend to want to micromanage and control. And I very much had that problem, very very much. You know, it was like it was easier to do it myself. Like I'd get easily frustrated, and but it's something you have to you have to discipline yourself, and you have to teach yourself not to you have to teach yourself not to do that, uh, and and you don't realize how much time you have to spend actually doing that. Like, like I would actually spend times in meetings where I'd be like, I'm not going to say something. I am not going to say something. I am not going to say something. I am going to let them have their you know kind of their moment. Um, and, and it's something you have to kind of take the time and invest in and not get frustrated with yourself in that process. Um, but, you know, it is fun. It is very fun in this whole thing. Um, you know, I, I really, uh, you know, look forward to uh, continuing this conversation. I'm looking forward to the questions. But I think, you know, when you think about your career and you think about entrepreneurship, um, it's more about the journey than the end point. So just don't forget that because, you know, every day is something new and different. And, and you, know, you know, I'm, I'm excited about Angie's List today just as much as I was 20 years ago, just because there's new opportunities. I like the people I'm working with uh, and we're solving neat problems. So, you know, it's kind of, it's about getting excited and, ta and enjoying your day every day. Because I tell people, this was also quoted in the New York Times. I ran home after I said it. Uh, after I saw it published because I was like, there was more to my story than what they published. And it was, if you don't like your job, you should quit. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I run to the HR. I was like, if we get a bunch of resignations today, I'm really, really sorry. I, I actually say, if you don't like your job, you should quit. Not that you don't like your job, you know, like, every single day it's like but you should in, in in whole if you don't like your job you should quit not like you know you have a bad day you should quit uh because you spend so much time in your career you know like let's face it we spend more of our our awake hours at work than we do at home with our family uh and you want to make sure that that is a rewarding experience for you so uh so you know kind of keep striving for that opportunity because it's out there so thank you